Uh, so today I'm going to be showing off some powerful integrations between uh, Nest.js uh, and Hasura, especially around uh, event and cron triggers. So let me just share my screen here. Is this showing up okay? Yep, just fine. Awesome. So yeah, Nest.js is a progressive uh, Node.js framework uh, for building efficient, reliable, scalable server-side applications. Uh, it's been growing really rapidly in popularity in the TypeScript and uh, Node JavaScript communities. Uh, and some of its key features are uh, strong TypeScript support. Um, it comes with an opinionated code structure, um, which allows you to have a clean separation of concerns uh, with things like modules and dependency injection. And it's also great for building uh, all different kinds of systems. Uh, so you can use it to build RESTful APIs. Uh, you can build GraphQL servers, which you can then uh, stitch into Hasura using the remote schema functionality. Uh, and you can also build microservices with it. Um, but as I mentioned, today I'm going to be focusing on uh, integration uh, with Hasura events uh, for both event triggers uh, as well as for cron triggers. Um, so this is one of the really powerful features of Hasura that uh, we make uh, a lot of use of uh, at work. And this ability uh, to have triggers allows you to have your own custom business logic that get connected through events. Uh, these events can either be uh, scheduled or they can be based on changes that are happening to data inside of your database. Uh, because the event handlers are implemented as webhooks, uh, we're free to use whatever language or text stack that we would like uh, to build really powerful event-driven applications. Um, but one of the problems that we ran into early on with adoption of this, this feature um, was that there's a lot of boilerplate for configuration. So for example, if I wanted to create uh, a new cron trigger um, beyond just the schedule and the webhook destination where this event will be sent to, uh, there's a lot of um, you know, uh, boilerplate that needs to be set up to um, kind of cover some cross-cutting concerns. Things like uh, logging, uh, having a common service layer for code. So like shared um, packages that we can leverage inside of these different events. Uh, and I think the most important one uh, is sort of an authentication principle. So um, if we're going to be hosting our event handlers as webhooks, we need to make sure that um, their uh, requests to the webhooks are trusted. Uh, and we, we really only want to let Hasura uh, be the thing that triggers those webhooks because it'd be really dangerous to just have these open and exposed to the public internet if someone were to find out uh, what the webhook endpoint was. Um, so that's one of the key features here. How do we make sure uh, that only applications that we trust are allowed to invoke these webhooks. Um, so with that kind of introduction out of the way, we'll jump right over to the demo. Um, so problem statements, how do we avoid uh, repetitive boilerplate and keep things dry? How do we deal with cross-cutting concerns like logging, code, share, code sharing and organization as well as testability? And then again, importantly, how do we protect our event endpoints so that they can be safely deployed? Um, so <clears throat> I've got a brand new uh, Nest.js application running here. Um, I scaffolded it with the Nest.js CLI, which you can uh, find documentation for on their website. Um, it's running right here in this uh, upper right uh, terminal window. And uh, I also have the Hasura dashboard running. So this is gonna be really simple as far as the database schema that I'll be showing. I just have a single table for right now called user. Uh, and we're gonna cover kind of two core scenarios. So an imaginary cron event, something that we want to do on a schedule, like sending out an email blast to our users, uh, as well as an event that will be based on uh, new records being inserted to our database. So when a user is created, uh, we want to send out a user onboarding email. Um, so Nest.js has a, a really um, clean pattern for defining uh, RESTful API endpoints. You can see here that I have one called greeting, uh, and it's just mapping this method to receive Git requests at this endpoint. If I were to curl that, you can see I get a response right away. So I could start to create my own handlers here, for example, to handle uh, the uh, Hasura events, but I would still be stuck with the problem of how do I make sure that these are uh, authenticated in like a, a reusable and uh, dry way. And so um, the open source package uh, that I've created called uh, at go level up slash nest.js Hasura. Uh, you can see, I've, I've already installed it, but uh, um, this is how you would add it with Yarn. Um, allows us to kind of cover uh, this use case uh, really simply. So in the app module, um, 
this is kind of the entry point for the Nest.js application, I can just uh, include a reference to the Hasura module uh, provided by the open source package. And I'll talk about the webhook configuration in just a moment, but I'm just gonna save this. And I wanna point out that um, there's some new diagnostic information here. There's a new route being exposed from my app called uh, slash Hasura slash events. And you can see that it's listening for post. And the neat thing here is that the controller that's exposing this endpoint is automatically provided through the Hasura module. Uh, so moving on to the webhook configuration, there's really only two uh, values that need to be set up here. Uh, first of all, we're going to uh, uh, give a name to a special uh, HTTP header that will be sent with every request. And then we need to provide uh, a secret value. So this in production would be like something that you're pulling from a secret vault or something secure. Um, but as long as Nest.js uh, knows what that value is and is configured here, um, we're good to go with the caveat that uh, you also need to provide that as an environment variable to Hasura at a known location. So I've just created this mapping where the ENV is passed into the Hasura instance uh, and my Nest.js uh, application is also aware of what this value is. Um, so uh, in order to start processing events, I'm just going to create a new service here. So I'm gonna create a user service. And in Nest.js, services are typically where you will put your business logic. So uh, for the user service, uh, we said we wanted to have a, a newsletter email type blast. Uh, so I'm just going to put this in here. There's a couple imports we're missing. And I'm going to bring in a reference to our email service. And for the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to be sending real emails. This is more about how we get the events into our backend so that we can uh, execute whatever backend log logic that we want. Um, but we'll make a call to a fake email service that just says send this email. So on the right hand side here, you can see that the Hasura module was initialized and it's actually discovered one Hasura event handler and it's registering that handler for us from the user service. So the final step to actually make use of this uh, is to make Hasura aware of it. Uh, because right now, um, you know, if I look in my events table, I still don't have any event triggers, cron or otherwise. Um, so the other um, really neat uh, functionality of this um, plugin is that if I go back to the app module, there's an additional uh, configuration that we can provide when running in sort of developer mode. So whenever you're doing uh, development locally, and that is to pass uh, a new uh, configuration object that just points the Nest.js application to wherever your Hasura metadata is stored. Um, so this is a pretty common uh, familiar directory for anyone who's done work with Hasura. Uh, we just point it to here and then we give the configuration, uh, the plugin some information about what the environment variable for our endpoint will be. And then again, uh, the corresponding uh, name of the environment variable that the uh, secret is stored in. So with this uh, in place, I get one more new message uh, that you know we're automatically syncing uh, Hasura uh, metadata. And if I look in my cron triggers YAML, uh, this had nothing in it before, but you can see that um, a fully functional cron configuration has been added, uh, including uh, making sure that the webhook is populated, making sure that uh, headers are being properly configured so that we can authenticate this request when it hits the backend. And the final step here, uh, is to just apply the metadata changes so that Hasura picks them up. So if I metadata apply here, it's applied. I refresh the page. You'll see that I now have a new cron trigger called send newsletter and it's been fully configured. Um, I'm open to the possibility of maybe more directly integrating with Hasura APIs so that we can do the metadata application for you. But for right now, um, just because we didn't want to take over the entire metadata uh, generation process, you just need to remember to do applies uh, as you make changes to your code base. But effectively, this allows uh, the Nest.js application to become more of the source of truth for the events that it will uh, be handling. And while we wait for that to uh, go, I'm going to also add in our user created handler. So 
So this decorator is slightly different. Uh, if you're uh, processing events that are uh, coming from the database directly, all you have to do is specify uh, the table name that the event is bound to, uh, give the trigger a name, and then the definition can be to handle uh, insert, update, or delete events. All of them are covered. Um, so in this case, we just want to do whenever uh, there's an insert event on the users table, we want to run this custom logic. Uh, and also, I just want to mention that we've seen our first cron event hit the server here. So uh, this is a pretty, uh, pretty aggressive newsletter. It comes through every minute. Uh, but that uh, integration there is working now. So uh, similarly, um, now that this has been added, the plugin picks it up. So if we look at the tables.yaml, we'll see that this, was, uh, this section was empty before, but the event trigger has now been added to tables.yaml and completely configured for you. Uh, so once again, all metadata apply. And just double checking the Hasura console. Should see now that we do indeed have a new event trigger for user created. It's fully configured. Um, and if I go now into uh, the user table, uh, don't ever store passwords as plain text. Um, you'll see as soon as I inserted that record, uh, a new message popped, uh, popped up here from the email service saying, welcome to test at example.com, who is our new user. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. There's uh, some more functionality around, again, the ability to handle uh, update events, uh, as well as delete events, uh, as, uh, and uh, really strong type safety around the uh, payloads that you actually receive from the events. Um, so often, if you're using GraphQL, you'll have like GraphQL code gen in there. You'll have a TypeScript interface that represents your table. Uh, so you can use that type to basically say, uh, have strong type safety for the data that's coming in, including all information that's included from Hasura about the event. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about uh, how well NestJS and Hasura work together, uh, especially the ability to tie uh, really neat event-driven applications together. 